Frankly, both teams are better, and nobody in the country is playing better than North Carolina is right now. Pitt controls the tip. All freshmen in backcourt. Jalen Lowe with the ball and Bob Carrington. And they are both talented, confident, and have really grown into the role, as Jeff Cable told us. They got a lot thrown at them as true freshmen in the backcourt early this year. The jumper won't go down for Blake Henson. Here come the heels. Harrison Ingram starting out on Blake Henson. That is strength on strength. And Ingram provides a, a great edge to this team. One of the best rebounders in the country. Led the ACC in ACC play and rebounding at 11. You expect Carolina to try to go inside to Baycott as much as they can early. Absolutely. Got a switch now. Blake Henson on Baycott. And they are going at it. But an Aaron pass by Ingram turns it over to the Panthers. Well, Henson just had Baycott wrapped up. His arms completely around him. And that pass just a little bit too strong. That's a tough angle to break contact and be able to go get him. The starting five for Pitt with Lowe and Carrington talked about them. Hinson as well, Zach Austin, and then Federico. Federico, who will split time at the five spot with Guillermo Diaz Graham as the Panthers strike first. So Bob Carrington so good in that middle pick and roll. And there's Carolina going inside. Henson had his arm wrapped around Ingram on that one. He literally got turned around. They were back to back with one another. And just a terrific rebound by Zach Austin, who's a good defender, energy guy. Passes up the three, lost it on the way up. Shot clock did not reset. Low misses the jumper, and Cadeau was grabbing and pulling the jersey of Austin, and he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Well, take a look right here at Bub Carrington. Gets the ball back, just that middle screen roll, then twists it, and he just puts Cormac Ryan on his back. Very good in the mid-range, and he's very good at changing speeds. He can snake those pick and rolls. He is a really good guard. Henson driving on Baycott, and he lost it. Numbers for the heels. Cadeau with the layup. Well, you make a mistake, and Carolina turns it into a basket in no time. The transition ability of this team has improved from the middle of the season to now, where they are really running. And they ran like crazy against Florida State yesterday. And Jeff Cable, who played at Duke, coached at Duke, an assistant coach for many years, he said this Carolina team, in terms of their transitional transition ability, reminds him of vintage Carolina teams. And he will be yelling at his guys to get back. Baycott powers it up and in. Well, speaking of transition, Armando Baycott ran down the middle of the floor and established low post position. You give him an angle and play him on the high side. He's going to spin off to the baseline. That's exactly what he did against Federico Federico. And Hubert Davis wanted to establish Armando Baycott early, get his big guy going, and he's got to be very pleased with that. Baycott playing in his 165th game. Of course, uh, a fifth-year player, second-team All-ACC this year, also a member of the ACC All-Defensive Team, and a significant spike this year in his free-throw shooting. Federico, good patience, and he lays it in. Didn't call a walk there because he didn't have possession. He was bobbling the ball, so that allowed him those extra steps. Cadeau tipped out by Ingram. How often do you see Carolina do that? All the time. They do it on free throws, and you have to be alert. If they can't grab it, they're going to tip it back, and someone in white is most likely to get it. Ingram, the transfer from Stanford, has had a great year for Carolina. Picks it to Cormac Ryan. Deep one. Oh, boy. <laughs> he is now 10 of his last 13 from three. I think the other nine just swished in. That one anything but, but they all count. The newest heel hit the heel of the rim and it went in. Well, he's playing with so much confidence. Low the pull up. Little strong. Rebound Ryan. Here they come again. And Cormac Ryan had that ball in his hands for no time after he grabbed that rebound and Carolina was out running. Davis looking into Baycott and a foul on Federico and that's going to be his second in the early going. The activity of Armando Baycott has been impressive, but after this initial strip, Carolina out and running, and that's one of the great things about Harrison Ingram.
he can operate basically as a small forward. When he grabs a rebound, he can rip it and run himself without having to outlet it to a guard. That makes Carolina that much faster. So Jay Federico on the bench with two. Guillermo Diaz, Graham in. How does this change things defensively for Pitt? It means that Pitt is going to have to double team in the post because Diaz Graham is not as strong physically as Federico. Federico can go one-on-one -on -one in the post with Armando Baycott. It's still advantage Baycott because he's so good, but Diaz Graham needs help. But Diaz Graham can do that. He can stretch the floor, trying to pull Baycott away from the bucket and knock down a three. Ingram to Ryan, and that's partially blocked by Austin. It was all the way blocked. <laughs> you got to give a shot fake all around him. Boy, Jalen Lowe, so quick. Such a great handle. Diaz Graham open again. How about that? Checks into the game, and he knocks down two threes in about 30 seconds. Just a simple pick-and-pop play, and Armando Baycott in drop coverage. That means he's covering far below the ball and worried more about a roll and containing the ball. Ingram, no. Diaz Graham, the rebound. Well, with Diaz Graham coming in and hitting threes, that can stretch out this Carolina defense and open up the middle. And now Baycott's got to get on him up at the three-point line. Lowe gets all the way to the bucket, and part of that, it looked like Baycott didn't want to go get low. He was worried about Diaz Graham. It was all of that. He had to worry about Diaz Graham, so he can't just park in the lane like he could with Federico Federico in the game. 8-0 run pit. R.J. Davis puts it on the deck. Good pass. Ryan open on the wing. Air ball. Excellent block out by Blake Henson on Armando Baycott. Low. Austin. What a start for the Panthers. And this is the way Pittsburgh plays. They want to spread you out and knock down threes. They make over nine per game. And they can go for more than that if they get hot. And that's without Blake Henson knocking any down yet. They take and make more than any team in the ACC has this year. Davis, no. And Austin again, just a terrific energy guy, good rebounder. Back to low around the screen, and Diaz Graham is called for the foul. Federico, Federico getting into early foul trouble. That brings Guillermo Diaz Graham into the game. The penetration, kicking it back out to the big tournament team. But obviously our opinions don't count. It's just the committee members voting individually. But this is a tournament team. No question in my mind. Seth Trimble into the game for Carolina. Terrific last night or yesterday afternoon against Florida State. 12 points, 5 rebounds. Baycott following up the miss. Jalen Withers has checked in as well. Number 24 for the Heels. Ryan forces it up. Can't get it to go. Diaz Graham the rebound. Ton of contact on that shot. But smart of Seth Trimble to throw the ball inside, get it back, and then throw it in again so Baycott could repost. Ishmael Leggett in the game for the first time for Pitt. Coming off the bench the second half of the year. Again, just a monster game against Wake yesterday. 30 points and 8 rebounds. And some looking to go one-on-one -on -one against Ryan. Ryan stands him up and wins the battle. The stayed in front, make him take that tough two over you. R.J. Davis yet to score in this game. Blake Henson yet to score in this game. Let's start doing some switching on R.J. Davis to make sure they're attached and there's coverage. That step back is so hard to deal with. Off the back of the iron, it's pit ball. Diaz Graham kicks it back to low, and now they'll set up. Jalen Lowe, an excellent ball handler, left-handed, goes to that left hand, just couldn't complete it. Harrington gets back quickly to get in front of Davis. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. Baycott can't get the reverse. In this four-game winning streak of Pitt that we were talking about, last three regular season games, and then yesterday here, they are averaging 85 points per game and winning by an average margin of 15 a game as the tough runner goes for Buck Carrington. Such a creative finisher around the basket. Low and Carrington gives Pitt two point guards on the floor at all times. Similar to when Davis and Cadeau are out there for North Carolina. Carrington, a freshman from Baltimore and a member of the ACC All-Rookie Team.
Jalen Withers with a bucket for Carolina, snapping a streak of eight consecutive missed field goals. He's got 15 rebounds in his last two games against Duke and Florida State. He is really starting to be a big contributor off the bench for North Carolina. And in not a ton of minutes, too. He's kind of a 12 to 14 a minute guy off the bench for them. And he was a starter at Louisville. Hit yeah. 43s last year. They get a good look. Can't knock it down. And there's a rebound for Withers. Boy, Davis has about six different gears, doesn't he? And they're all fast. The stop and go <laughs> yeah. game is tremendous. Withers and that elbow got up in the face of Hinson. Hinson is saying he got me. But I think the foul is on him. They may have a look. We'll see as they go to break. Pitt doing a lot of things well, Jay, in the early going. Well, Pittsburgh has pushed the pace when they've been on the defensive boards. And Bub Carrington, just a freshman. He doesn't play like it. That's a heck of a finish. So Pitt ball with an early seven-point lead here in Washington. Really good matchup between Ishmael Leggett and Seth Trimble just switched out. Now that puts Jalen Washington on. He can drive him to the right. Washington has come in for Baycott. Leggett pulls up, can't hit it, and it belongs to the Heels. Washington can shoot that three. He's eight for 15 from beyond the arc. So you got two big guys who can really shoot the ball from outside on the floor right now. Washington can pull the trigger on a three. He doesn't shoot many of them. More of a face-up big guy down in the low post rather than a guy that's going to go into contact. But very skilled. Did you ever think nine minutes into the game, neither R.J. Davis nor Blake Kinson would have scored? Somehow I think that'll be remedied. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> the night is young. Davis with Carrington on him. The screen by Washington. Baseline Trimble. Off to Washington who banks it home. Well, he has become a much better finisher in the lane. And any time Seth Trimble catches the ball, he should drive it. Such a powerful driver, even though he's not a perimeter shooter. He can get five people. When he jumps off two feet, forget it. How about that dunk he had in yesterday's game? Diaz Graham misses it. Hinson taps it out, but Davis has it. Davis all the way. It will go. That is just speed personified. And when you try to tip the ball out against Carolina, one of the negatives is Carolina can take it the other way and start their transition. Quick 4-0 run. Heels back within three midway through the first half. Carolina switching right now, one through five. Harrington for three, yes. Well, he is a player. Leads Pitt in assists, he's second in points per game. Threes, second in rebounding. How about oh, excellent guard rebounding? How about the only freshman in the nation averaging 13 and a half points, five rebounds, and four assists per game this year? He's got a complete game, and he's yeah. really good defensively. He stays in front of R.J. Davis. 6-4, got good length, off Washington, out of bounds, back to Pitt. After Pitt tips back that rebound, just trying to get it to a teammate. That started the break, and R.J. Davis goes between defenders and puts it off the glass. Just beautifully done by maybe the best two-guard in the country. Nobody's played better this year than R.J. Davis has for North Carolina. Do you know at the beginning of this year, he was 48th on Carolina's all-time scoring list? He's ninth now. He passed 39 guys this year, and he may pass a couple tonight. Harrington fouled on the drive. Well, in their defense, those 39 guys didn't get to play this no, year. No, they didn't. Yeah, they didn't contribute much <laughs> at all. I don't know why Hubert had some on scholarship. <laughs> R.J. Davis uh, may hit 2,000 points tonight. Came into the game of 1975. Uh, Davis is ninth all time, and he is seven points behind Larry Miller, so he could pass him for eighth tonight. Could wind up realistically, depending on how deep they go in postseason play, could wind up fifth all time on the Carolina scoring. Amazing, amazing. Washington out, Davis out, Baycott in, Ryan in. And to think that the backcourt that R.J. Davis played in the last three years, Caleb Love and R.J. Davis, both players of the year this yeah. year in different leagues. In a major, a major, major conference. Yeah, pretty good. 
Meanwhile, Pitt extends the lead to eight. The four seed in this tournament, that's the highest they've been since coming into the ACC. Each of these teams is just playing for the second time in as many nights. Each earned the double bye. So no Davis, Cadeau and Trimble out there on the perimeter along with Ryan. Trimble will take a three and hit it. So Seth Trimble, he doesn't take a ton of them, but he's now 10 for 25. And by my man, that's 40% by anybody's name. <laughs> that makes Seth Trimble now the fourth Tar Heel in double figure threes on the season. He only had three all this time with Ryan Davis and Ingram. Leggett, good job by Cadeau, forcing Leggett to kick it out. Five on the shot clock. Harrington into a cutting Diaz Graham who missed it. A terrific cut and what a find by Buck Harrington. Trimble was kind of stumbling backwards, just threw it back out into the perimeter. Trimble is stronger than Jalen Lowe. If he winds up getting it, he should drive that matchup. Ingram baseline on Hinson. And Diaz Graham gets nabbed for the foul. Number two on Guillermo Diaz Graham. Carolina down five, but a big three recently, Jay, to get him closer. Well, Pittsburgh packing the paint because they're not as worried about Seth, uh, Seth Trimble knocking down a three, but he knocks down his tenth three of the year, shooting about 37% from behind the arc. against Duke. One team NC State likes to play fast. Virginia not so much. So where do all of these teams stand? Well if you ask Joe Lenardi, Virginia is one of the last four in. Does that mean they need this one tonight to lock it up? And you can see Pitt one of the first four out according to Joey Brackets right now and obviously even if they're not in now, a win tonight of Carolina would be monstrous for them. As you've said, it's not just about that. It's about, you know, we're close enough to the finish line here in this tournament. It's about a trophy and a banner and memories and legacy and, and all of that as well. But Pitt is playing for a lot here tonight. One thing I know, you win the ACC Tournament Championship, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. Slice cut screen for the screener action for Pitt. Good pressure on the ball by Seth Trimble. He is such a good defender. Federico, Federico back in. He's got two fouls, as does Guillermo Diaz Graham. Soft touch by Bud Carrington. He just uses that ball screen so well. Federico was rolling to the basket. He had the lob. But because he just didn't blast off that and used a change of speed, it was really effective. The Doe tries a three. Can't hit it. Trimble's hit one already tonight. Carolina needs to pick up the pace offensively, even when they're in the half, half court. And maybe that's why R.J. Davis is coming back in. Maybe Hubert's seeing the same thing you're seeing, and they're not playing fast enough. They ran, ran their offense with great pace in the half court on those possessions against Florida State. Now, they had so much in transition. They were scoring every which way. But Pitt's done a good job of taking away transition. Same play they just ran. And the call's going against Federico, and that's going to be number three on him. And Jeff Capel's got to think about what he wants. Diaz Graham stood up, and Capel said, no, 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 no. Sit back down, and William Jeffress, a 6'7 redshirt junior from Erie, Pennsylvania, is coming into the game as Pitt gets quite a bit smaller, and they go deeper than they typically go. Well, Jeffress is a good defender. But he's giving up some size to Armando Baker. Jeffress on the season, averaging about 11 minutes per game. And a quick bucket for R.J. Davis and a foul on Leggett to boot. Just ran a little wide pin down for R.J. Davis. He can come off it to the ball. He can curl it. And the defender is going to be trailing. He curled it a bit, went up, got hit by Leggett. And still had the presence to take that contact, uh, contact and knock the shot down. Now you got a great free throw shooter going for a three point play. Don't say it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't hear me. <laughs>
Four point lead for Pitt. 620 to go. Here in the first half of the first semifinal tonight, Cormac Ryan is called for the foul. He's got two hands on the ball handle. He's been doing a good job of staying in front and getting over that screen. Zach Austin returns now for the Panthers. Leggett will sit so they get a little bit bigger, not at the five spot, but at one of the other spots on the floor. Harrison Ingram still on Blake Henson. That's a really good matchup between a great scorer and Ingram, who does a good job defensively. And physically, they're like the same size, both really strong, same height, both 6'7". Okay, he's not going to bully Ingram. Ingram forced him into a tough turnaround. The foul is on the floor, no basket. Just had both hands on him and went. You have to get that arm bar off of the offensive player when he faces up. But once you get two hands on the ball handler like, like that, it's all over. It's part of what makes Hinson so dangerous. He can post and bully his way to the basket sometimes. He's also made more threes than anybody in the ACC this season. Got a switch. Low sizing up Baycott. Step back three. Short. Good job by Baycott to stay in front. How about this pass? To go ahead to Baycott. Carolina back within two. Reward the big guy. And Carolina just wears you down. Carolina fans getting into it. Three won't go for Carrington. Here comes to go. Whoa! What a block by Zach Austin. Highlight real stuff at the defensive end for Austin. Just sailing in from behind the play and wipes this one away. Looked like Cadeau was trying to go left hand off the backboard, and instead it's in row two. Redshirt Jr., a transfer from High Point. Carolina can tie or take the lead. Good pass. Baycott swings it to Cadeau. Extra pass to Ryan. Steps in. Ingram ties the game. Well, that was all made by the ball movement and then the great shot fake by Cormac Ryan. Can Pitt weather the storm here after this run by the heels? Well, this Tar Heel defense is pretty. Harrington with a Baycott on it. Tough two, and it wow. goes. That is not an easy shot. Yeah, he's got half of their points. And Armando Baycott is called for the foul, getting a little too physical, trying to post on Jeffress. Well, Jeffress did a good job getting down early and fighting him. And Armando Baycott trying to get around in front. But once you do that swim move. Jeff Cable just trying to buy some minutes. With Federico Federico on the bench with three fouls and Guillermo Diaz Graham on the bench with two fouls. So he's got Jeffress in there playing against Baycott at the five spot. At the switch, now Davis is on Hinson. Hinson spins right into Baycott, too strong off the glass. And which way is it going? It's going on Pitt, it looks like. Boy, what a great job by Armando Baycott to come over from the weak side to challenge Blake Henson after he got past R.J. Davis on the switch. Now, this is why Armando Baycott is on the ACC All-Defensive Team. Just waited behind, walled up. And I'm not sure who Jeffress hit. He looked like he hit his own man. Seventh team foul, so one and one for Elliott Fidel who was so good in the win over Florida State yesterday, uh, led the team in, in floor burns and diving on the floor and having to change leggings and, and bloody knees and all of that, but distributed the ball, pushed the break, just did so many good things for Carolina. I thought Elliott Cadeau changed the tenor of the game where he dove on that loose ball when Florida State was just bending over at the waist. And he had a dozen floor burns in that game to go along with his six assists. Made them both. 
Oh, you didn't say anything about the free throw percentage. That's why. <laughs> Jay Billis with some revisionist history <laughs> here on live national TV. <laughs> Harrington into traffic. Got 13 already tonight. Or is he having to work hard? Boy, Cormac Bryan did a great job getting around in front. Jeffress. Rebound Ingram. Who has had 10 or more rebounds in seven of his last eight games. And another pit foul. But it's so hard to keep R.J. Davis out of the lane. Tied at 26 late in the first half here in semifinal number one at the ACC tournament. has a tattoo on his bicep that says A4D, all for Dietrich, because he says everything I do is in dedication to him. Jess, thank you. Touching, heartwarming stuff, and, and so amazing that Ishleggett is able to have his dad in the building here with him this week. Yeah, really beautiful, and Jeff Capel told us before the game that he had noticed that Ish Leggett had a camera earlier this year, and he says, do you like to take pictures? And he says, yeah, I'm doing that now, but this is my dad's camera. And then he had his dad's camera with him yesterday. The Pitt social media crew was there to document all that, but just a beautiful story. Diaz Graham has returned playing with two. Low driving baseline on Cadeau. Little arm bar to create some space. He lays it in to tie the game. Really well defended early by North Carolina, but Pittsburgh just wouldn't be denied on that reversal pass and that was a strong drive by Jalen Lowe. He is a really good young player. Oh, just an errant pass by Cadeau picked off by Diaz Graham. Well, R.J. Davis fell down. He shouldn't have thrown it at all. Diaz Graham's hit two threes. Harrington's open. And Baycott watches it go out of bounds and it will be Pittsburgh basketball. And now they change the call and give it to Carolina and Jeff Cable saying what gives I called it, but I didn't see it <laughs> Jeff Cable playing at Duke in the early or the mid 90s uh, Hubert Davis playing at Carolina late 80s and early 90s uh, Jeff Cable's first year at Duke was 93 94 yeah. and then Duke went to the final four he was backcourt mates with Grant Hill Ryan the kick. And Cadeau called for a travel. Sixth Carolina turnover. With Pittsburgh tied in this game with two and a half to go in the first half. Blake Henson has not yet scored. Unbelievable. Averaging 19 a game. And give credit to Harrison Ingram. There has been some switching, but Ingram's done a great job on it. Carrington has picked up the slack and then some. Can't finish this one. But it stays with the Panthers. And Pittsburgh needs to position Henson opposite some screen roll action. That would open up the roll because he can't really leave Blake Henson. Henson 0 for 3 from the floor in this one. Carrington. What a night he is having. That is now 16 for the freshman Bud Carrington. And he's had some big scoring nights, but he's not only got to carry the scoring load, now he's got to guard R.J. Davis. The double on Bacon, little shovel pass, Cadeau missed it. And another rebound for Diaz Graham. He's done a really nice job on the glass in addition to knocking down a couple threes early. And his fifth rebound of the night. Jeff Capel trying to piece it together with the five spot with the foul trouble. An open middle with Armando Baycott having to get out and guard Diaz Graham. Leggett. Missed the reverse. Diaz Graham got a hand on it, but it's out of bounds to Carolina. Anytime, Buck Carrington got a little screen from Blake Henson to give him some separation when he went around that handoff. And he came off that handoff action ready to fire, but that separation from that initial screen from Henson is what made the play. 
Trimble into Baycott. Going right into the chest of Diaz Graham. Once he catches it there, he gets a little low cross screen. So he's catching it on the move. And that means Diaz Graham is on the move when he negotiates that screen. He's just not strong enough to keep Armando Baycott from getting to the rim. And also mindful of playing with a couple of fouls as well. Low the crossover. Baycott's on him at the moment. The scoop oh. up and in. If he's a lefty, just use that left hand to get it up on the backboard quicker than Baycock could block him. Final minute of the first half. Hit has led most of the way. Ingram knocks it down to tie it. So worried about R.J. Davis. When you help off or overhelp, Ingram is positioned well to take that three. Boy, what a first half. A spot in the ACC championship game on the line. Diaz Graham spins and lays it in over Baycock. For a right hand drive and then spins off the pressure and finishes with the left. That is a skilled seven footer. Huber Davis hollers out of play, signals to RJ Davis. They can milk the final few seconds. That Davis, was yeah, Hinson on him right now. Two seconds. And he missed the driving layup. Line of basketball. Ripping down a rebound. Running, going, laying it in. But there wasn't a whole lot of that, Jay, in the first half. Well, give Pitt credit. Their transition defense was excellent. After the initial surge of North Carolina, Pitt really got back and turned North Carolina into more of a half-court team. Carolina ball to start in the second half. And you have to think that Carolina wants to go after Federico Federico to start. He's playing with three. The rebound down to Hinson. And here comes Pitt led by Jalen Lowe. And Vincent got the switch. He's got Cadeau on him. And he is calling for the ball, but he didn't get it. Now he gets it. Baseline jumper too strong. I'm not sure he should have taken that. Just bully Elliott Cadeau to the rim. R.J. Davis had to work hard. Two for six. They really made life difficult on him in the first half. Nothing easy for him. Cadeau. Boy, is he good at getting it up on the glass soft. He does such a good job with that little crossover going slow to fast. And even though he is not a threat to knock down a perimeter shot, he can still get to the paint and get to the rim. Carrington defended by Ryan. Now Henson a challenge three around and out. And Jeff Papel put his hands on his head. He knew that Henson had that one. That's a shot he normally makes. Ryan a quick release. He misses the three. These long shots have not been rebounded quite as well by North Carolina. Don't think they need to attack inside first. Federico playing with three fouls, not an outside shooter. Much different than when Diaz Graham is in the game. And the big night continues for Carrington. Anytime he gets around the screen, he is coming off firing. But his pace is just so good in screening action. Ingram the shot fake and the drive. Got challenged, couldn't finish it. Good help there by Federico. Really good vertical contest by Federico Federico. Ingram tried to finish that with the left hand and had to hold it out to avoid the shot block. Pitt was able to get through about the last seven minutes of the half without Federico after he picked up his third. They got some minutes from William Jeffress and then Diaz Graham came in as well and they kind of survived that situation. But again, if he were to pick up a quick one here in the second, he'd go right back to the bench. Well, that was so well defended by Cormac Ryan, that little elbow action. Low up top, tipped up no good, and Carolina's running. Jeff Cable wants to know that why that wasn't a foul. Felt he got pushed in the air. This is Harrison Ingram, the back down when he's got a matchup advantage. Cadeau tips it to Baycott, who spins and hits to tie the game. Anytime Baycott is going to drive, doesn't matter which side. He loves to spin back toward the baseline. You have to take away that initial drive, but that opens up that spin. He's really good at getting an angle. None of these Carolina players, as Jess Sims talked about off the top of the show, has ever won an ACC tournament title. The last time they won it was long before Baycott got here. It was 2016 in this building. 
And there is a lot of motivation on the Carolina side to say, hey, we know we got some bigger things coming, big things coming in the NCAA tournament, maybe a one seed, but they want to win a championship here this week. Pittsburgh running middle action, and for the second time in a row, through that lob up to Federico Federico when he couldn't grab it, bring it down. He just passed it off to Lowe, who got that foul. Just a nice play by Federico when he couldn't get it on the initial, initial pass. Well, Jalen Lowe, the freshman from Missouri City, Texas, is at the line. Jeff Cable talking to us about a nerve issue that Lowe had in his knee at the beginning of the year. Iced his knee for too long or maybe too cold and created a nerve problem. And it really took him a couple of months to get totally healthy. That's why he started the year on the bench. Then midway through the year, Ish Leggett came up with a bit of a sore shoulder. And Jeff Cable swapped him. Leggett went to the bench and was incredibly productive coming off the bench six man of the year in the conference low went into the starting lineup and Jay had really benefited the team as a whole RJ Davis Carolina leads RJ Davis set a little low cross screen for Armando Baca usually he'd get a screen from there but when Pitt came with the double that left Davis open on the opposite side. That was really smart by Armando Baycott to dribble out of that double where he could pass opposite. Low draws a crowd and kicks to Zach Austin who misses the three. And Carolina's got it. Ryan keeps the dribble alive. Tip no good by Baycott. And now Hinson comes up with it and Pitt's got it. Pitt has numbers. They caught behind the play. Henson still scoreless in this game as it belongs to the Panthers. One point lead, Tar Heels early in the second half. Take them, you can have the field. Well, you put anybody with Michael Jordan, <laughs> it works out pretty well. But yeah, just that play is along with the five. band, would you? An amazing fun. <laughs> it is. I mean, the history of that program. Obviously incredible and R.J. Davis uh, getting himself into some pretty, pretty good company. Jalen Lowe with a three, pit back on top. Lead change number six tonight. Lowe set a back pick and then popped out to the three-point line. And all the action went with the cutter. Davis no, Lowe the rebound. I've been impressed with the way Pittsburgh has run off of misses. Again, a team that has won four in a row, the four seed in this league, playing with a lot of confidence. Stolen by Cadeau. Great defense by Armando Baker. What a pass. How about that pass to R.J. Davis and one. I give credit to Armando Baycott. He's making plays on both ends of the floor. Stopping that drive by Ish Leggett, then Cadeau jumps in front. That's just excellent defense and a great steal by Cadeau, but this is a next level pass. Pretty good grab by R.J. Davis as well. The foul on Carrington, Davis at the line. Now, Carolina is a high DAP team. Yes. They DAP all the time. That shows a, a close group. DAPing is a, is a good thing. You ought to try it sometime. <laughs> Davis knocks it down. By the way, he has officially passed Larry Miller into eighth place now on the Carolina scoring list. So he has passed 40 guys this year. Larry Miller was a great player. Lefty. Could really shoot it. Diaz Graham. Into the five spot for Pitt out of the last timeout. Good minutes, hit a couple of threes in the first half. Same action, but better defended by North Carolina. Low the miss, and away from the ball, it's a foul on Carolina. Cormac. And judging by the look on Cormac Ryan's face, it's on him. They yeah, just gave a little shove to Guillermo Diaz Graham. A little discard of Diaz Graham. Padosic trembles in. Oh, what a steal. Baycott will finish. What a play. And that's why he spilled that beer. That's an unacceptable turnover. That's a flagrant two is what that is. So. <laughs> <laughs> and the league office will have to take a look at that. Boy, Harrison Ingram has done a really nice job on Blake Henson. He just hasn't been able to free himself up. They're just not leaving him. He's trying. And it feels like Henson wants to shoot every time he can touch it just to break the ice and get himself going. Well, he's just pressing. Yeah. Baycott. 
fouled by Diaz Graham. That'll be number three on him. Baycott not only had a great rim run, he got great position down in that restricted area. He just buried Diaz Graham right under the basket. He just ran down the middle of the floor and got great position and locked Diaz Graham right on his hip. Had no choice but to foul him or give up the bucket. And as I've heard you say many times, you get deep enough position, you don't even have to make a post move. You just go up and try to score. That's what really what you tell post guys is post so deep that you don't have to make a post move. Four point lead, Carolina over Pitt. Coming up next, the post game show, nothing but net on the ACC network. Telling you everything that you need to know from the two semifinals tonight, getting you all charged up for the championship game that we will have at 8 30 Eastern time tomorrow night on ESPN. Ryan, no. Harrington wraps up the rebound. So Pittsburgh has some outstanding rebounding guards. Ish Leggett. And Bob Carrington, those guys both average over five rebounds per game. And one of the first things Hubert Davis has said to us, whoa, 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 yeah, I mean, just way too obvious. Didn't need it and got called for it. And Jeff Capel wants to settle his freshman guard down. He's been so outstanding tonight and call a timeout and try to reverse the momentum here in this game. Yeah, this is a, this is a calm down timeout. Not just for Carrington, but for Blake Henson as well. Carolina now leading by four. Is KFC's new pizza pizza? Fried chicken? That's not pizza. Last four in. Forgive me, my mistake. Jay, we spoke too soon. Last four in. Uh, for Texas A&M, so that is obviously a game with bubble ramifications, so that could impact it. But boy, all around the country, just tremendous action going on here in Champ Week as R.J. Davis extends the lead. Carolina keeps getting a piece of the paint. They are attacking the paint that's going to show up at the free throw line. Low misses the layup. And that was a strong side, too. He's a lefty. 8-0 run right now for the Heels. And Ryan over the back just picked up his third. And that's going to send him to the bench as Ingram is in. So Washington, Withers, and Ingram, a bigger lineup. Ingram, in effect, playing the three right now. Blake Hinson. Has Jalen Withers on him at the moment. Hinson 0 for 7, scoreless in the game. Not much going on right now on this possession for the Panthers. Lowe trying to take matters into his own hands, and he does. Lowe called for a screen from his backcourt mate, Carrington. A little guard on guard pick and roll action. But a bucket at the other end. How did Withers catch that ball? He not only made a great catch in traffic off that R.J. Davis bullet, but was able to get it to Jalen Washington. That was beautiful. Trimble slows down low. Carrington and Lowe have combined for 31 of Pitt's 44 points. Two freshman guards. Big load to carry. The three. Wow. Yes. What a night he is having. And he's having to create it largely on his own. This is just a freshman. Jay, not only have they not gotten a single point from Blake Hinson, they haven't gotten a single point from Ish Leggett either, who scored 30 against Wake yesterday. You know, those two combined for 50. Boy, Lowe might have gotten away with one right there. And then Washington might have gotten away with one, so it's all even. And here comes Pitt. Hinson back to low. Got the switch. Needs to take R.J. Davis down in the post. Now Trimble switches off on him. That's a good matchup for North Carolina. Hinson goes to the corner. Low pulls up from 17 and left it short. Trimble can bring it up on his own. He's essentially a point guard out there. 
Into Washington, who lays it in. Good find by Trimble. Carolina's starting to wear out Pittsburgh. Barrington using the screen. Federico too strong. Washington the rebound. Ingram lost it, and he and the ball go sailing out of bounds. Well, Hubert Davis not particularly happy with that. He wants his team to push it, but not have his hybrid four-man dribbling through that much traffic. What a great pass we buffed Carrington. But they're having to work extremely hard to get difficult shots. Credit Carolina's defense for that. Carrington and Lowe have combined for 34. Hinson and Leggett have yet to score. Two guys who, between them, average better than 31 points per game. This is Hinson. Step back, and it goes. And he breaks the ice with ten and a half to go here in the second half. Well, that was hardly poorly defended by Jalen Withers. Made him take a tough shot, fading away off the glass. It's and, a really good offense. And Hinson grimacing. Saw him reach down and kind of grab the outside of his left thigh. Have to keep an eye on that. Trimble drives, and a whistle and a foul going against Pitt. So they got low. Yeah. Blake Hinson just ripping through. Body might do that step back. Goes right through. Contact from two Carolina players. Seth Trimble reached in there as well. He really had to protect that ball almost like a running back before going up for that shot. Trimble had a good one against Pitt in their regular season meeting on January the 2nd. 10 points, 6 rebounds in 23 minutes. And then was even better, I thought, against... Uh, Florida State yesterday 12 points five rebounds two assists in 18 very powerful minutes off the bench And that was right after a 10-point outing at Duke where he went five of nine from the field Seth Trimble has been giving Hubert Davis great minutes off the bench and while he's scoring his defense has been even more impactful Trimble's now on Bub Carrington Pitt was up two at the half Carolina up by five right now just past the midway point of the second half winner to go to the championship game tomorrow Shot clock at three Carrington had to adjust in midair and down with the rebound Ingram give Armando Baycott great credit for affecting that shot A touch for Baycott doubled Davis calls a play. Spinning into the paint and it hits. What a tough shot. And he called for that screen from Trimble because he wanted to go after low. He knew he'd get a switch and got the tough mid-range jumper, but he makes tough look easy, doesn't he? 16 now on the night for R.J. Davis. 10 in the second half. At the switch. Low the crossover, and it goes. Took a little bump from Baycott and still finished it. Those are such difficult finishes. Ingram lost the handle. Leg it. And Pitts missed three or four layups that normally, obviously, they make in this five-point game. Armando Baycott has been switching out on guards. He's got Buff Carrington here trying to stay in front, but he knows he can put late pressure, and that late pressure caused Carrington to have to adjust that shot, and he missed it. And then R.J. Davis gets the switch that he wants and goes after it. Huber Davis just took R.J. Davis out, the uh, under-eight timeout, not that far away. Get him a little breather here without missing a whole lot of game time. Trimble into Baycott. The double. The kick. Ryan. What a rebound attempt there by Trimble. Got way up in the air. And it stays with Carolina. Trimble out jumped the ball. Unbelievable. He's another one of these guys where you'd say, I mean, he's a really good basketball player. But boy, does he look like he could be a halfback or something. I mean, just his power and his 
his strength, his ability. He could be a high jumper. Yeah. He doesn't need to Fosbury flop. Just <laughs> jump over the thing. The younger brother of J.P. Tokido, who was an excellent two-footed jumper himself. For Mac Ryan, so hot the last couple of games. Cold tonight, just one for nine. Baycott spins and hits, and it's back to seven. His mobility looks great. He's moving his feet not only on offense, but especially on defense. He's so active. Leggett got it, and a foul. Baycott got a piece of his arm. That is a big bucket going into the under eight timeout. Leggett will be at the free throw line as well when we come back. As Pitt tries to stay in it and pull off an upset over the number one seed here tonight. Pittsburgh is battling. Leggett knocks down that mid-range shot. Baycott fouls him. And on the other end, Armando. Virginia tonight. The two teams split their two regular season matchups. Pittsburgh is hanging in there. And North Carolina in the second half, 9 of 14 from two-point range. Now, they're just 1 of 6 from three, but I think you expect Carolina to keep pounding the ball inside to Armando Baycott. He'll come out and set a ball screen. R.J. Davis still on the bench right now for Carolina. The drive won't go, and I think they got Hinson for a hold. Well, Baycott was right there for that rebound, grabbed it with his right hand because his left arm was being grabbed. It was the first on Henson. Once Cadeau drives, that can open up the offensive glass. And Baker, you see the grab right there. Go grab it one handle. Davis back in for the heels. Cadeau sits. And here is Davis. Floater, no. Tip, no. Follow, yes. Baycott sticking with it. He is just relentless. That wide pin down, that means that Baycott can just roll to the basket. He's there for the offensive class. Should R.J. Davis miss? Seven minutes to go. Six-point game. Hinson. Way short. And it belongs to the heels. Great defense by Harrison Ingram. He was attached to Blake Hinson and did not leave him. It doesn't feel like any of Hinson's three-point attempts have been like clean, comfortable catch-and-shoot plays. And credit to Ingram on that. All high degree of difficulty for Blake Hinson. Now the switch low on Davis. Ingram for three. Another rebound for Baycott. Davis for three. And Carrington soars for the rebound. Looks ahead to Henson. Count it and one. What a pass by Buck Carrington. Carrington mid-court bending over at the waist. He is tired, but he has worked really hard in this game. Jay, I don't think Bob Carrington has come out of this game tonight. He is listed at 34 minutes. There's 6.14 to go. You talked about the heavy load that he has to carry tonight for this team. Well, how could Jeff Capel afford to take him out? Yeah. What a fantastic one-handed diagonal pass to Blake Henson. Only R.J. Davis in the way. And Henson so big and strong. There wasn't much that Davis could do, but he couldn't keep him from scoring and fouling. Third assist of the night for Carrington. He's got four rebounds, 21 points. Three-point play for Henson. Three-point lead for Carolina. And maybe that kind of play can get Blake Henson going for this last six minutes of regulation. Same low cross screen to free up Bacos. Who goes around Diaz Graham and lays it in. He's so good at getting to that baseline side. But that low cross screen from Ryan just gave him that separation to get the ball on the left block. Low driving. Puts the brakes on and misses the turnaround. Out of bounds, Carolina ball. Just after getting that low cross screen, that freed him up, and Diaz Graham a little late getting there. 
and he turned away from the double team by low to the baseline side. You have to be prepared for him to spin baseline every time he gets the ball. Doesn't matter which side of the lane he's on. The immediate double on Baycott. Looking cross court, but before he could make the pass, he was fouled. There's no reason for Diaz Graham to reach there. He had Baycott picking up his dribble. Just get your hands high and discourage a straight line pass. There's the double. He dribbles out of it. But you don't need to reach there. It's just an obvious foul. His fourth. He sits. Federico back in. Deflected pass. Pitts got it. Good job by Lowe coming over with those high hands. Leggett knocks down a three, and it's a two-point game. What a big play by Lowe to get that deflection. Everybody on the pit bench standing right now at the other end of the court. Coaches and players alike. But how hard has Pittsburgh fought in this game? Trying to get to the ACC championship game for the first time since they joined the league in 2014. Leggett's got it for Pitt. Pitt in the semis in their first year in 2014. In the semis this year have never been to the ACC tournament championship game. Low off balance and he banks it in. What a shot. How about these two freshmen, Jay? I don't think they have any idea how hard it is to do what they're doing. The Panthers have battled back to tie, but not for long, thanks to R.J. Davis. Well, guess who? Armando Baycott comes up for the middle ball screen, and R.J. Davis refuses it to get that three. Federico off to Carrington. And a foul going against Carolina. It's on Armando Baca. I think he pushed Federico into the ball, and that's where the foul came from. 3.41 to go. Boy, are guys making tough plays tonight, including, as you said, guys who don't know how to... Hit ball down by three. Good job by Carolina to switch that screen for the screener action. Carrington got tripped. No call. Pitt still got it. And Carrington back up and in the play. Henson has Cormac Ryan on there. Carrington pulls up. Around and out. Ingram the rebound. They're all looking at Baycott. Does he get a touch? Here it goes. And no double with Federico guarding him. Now it comes and a foul. Yeah, the double team from Ishmael Leggett came late. Armando Baycott had already established two feet in the paint by the time Leggett came over. And that's too late. He's going to get a score, a foul, or both if you let him get that deep. Baycott two for three from the line tonight and shooting a career best 78 percent from the line on the season. Well, have we got you covered on Selection Sunday? It all starts at 6 Eastern with Sports Center here on ESPN. Reese and the guys will look at the men's field of 68 as the brackets are announced and bracketology breaking down each region. At 8 o'clock, the women's field of 68 is revealed again with bracketology and a complete breakdown. Tipped out by Ingram, but Pitts got it. Under three minutes to go. Tremble on Carrington. What a great matchup individually. Now the switch. He has Graham into Hinson, who calls the timeout. 2.45 to go. Pit ball down by four. We're back in 30.
shots after switching out on guards and moving his feet to stay in front. Henson driving on Ingram. Off the rim and down to Davis. He got past Ingram, but Baycott was still back there. They have just built a wall around the bucket. Baycott swings it to Davis. He'll launch a three and hit it. A huge shot for R.J. Davis. And another great handling of a double team by Armando Baycott. Dribbling out and looking opposite. Third assist of the night for Baycott. Davis now has 16 points in the second half. 22 on the night. Lowe has it rejected and Baycott's got it. What a defensive performance by Armando Baycott. To stay in front of a guard and recover, then block that shot, that is big time. And now they can afford to be a little bit patient with the clock. Up by seven, now with a minute 40 to go. That same screen to get the switch so R.J. Davis can take on Jalen Lowe. Not this time. And Carrington has it for Pitt. Where can he rebound? They don't let Hinson get the shot off. Carrington guarded by Baycott. A three. And it's out of bounds. Still Panther ball. Armando. Into Leggett. Good defense by Ryan. Really good defense by Ryan. Leggett finds it. And it looks like somebody. And again, one second added to the clock. Now a minute eight. Harrington. Trimble had it. He got knocked down. And wound up out of bounds with the ball. So again, it's pit ball. And this time the shot clock reset. So it's back at 20. Good stand there by Seth Trimble. And then he goes up and gets the rebound. Yeah, one out of bounds. I wasn't sure whether they called a walk or out of bounds. There was a lot of contact. Hinson. Diaz Graham the rebound. Carrington for three. Oh! And it's a four-point game. And here comes some pressure. Well, Diaz Graham has done a great job on the glass when he's been in there. A little one, two, two, three-quarter court pressure now from Pittsburgh. Trimble gets it over to Ingram. Do they play it out or do they foul? And a timeout called by Hubert Davis. 30. Trimble is out. Oh, what a cut by R.J. Davis. And a foul. And that's the last guy you want to send to the free throw line if you're pit. And that's why Jeff Capel has the uh, body language and expression on his face that he has right now. That's not what you want to see. That was just a great cut. R.J. Davis cut like he was coming to the ball, then cut toward the basket and looked like he was eyeing Harrison Ingram in that right corner when he got fouled. 89% on the season. Now watch this cut by R.J. Davis. Comes off the screen and just back cuts to get the ball. And he was looking over toward Harrison Ingram when he got hit in the head there to send him to the foul line. And in your opinion, is that a play put in during the timeout? Or is that just Davis just feeling and reading the defense and adjusting? Well, it's both. If the defense is not playing you, go ahead and get the ball straight on. But if they're going to deny, use that back cut. Harrington short. Davis has it. And he's going back to the free throw line. And it's getting closer and closer right now for Carolina. Another gutsy, gritty performance by North Carolina on the defensive end. And there are a lot of players to credit in white. But number one would be Armando Baker. When he has switched out on the guards, he did a fabulous job.
three possession game. Missed it. And now the threes, no fouls. Leg it, no. Baycott has it. Off to Ryan as the seconds tick away. And it looks like that's going to be that. Carolina got a push from Pitt. But in the end, the number one seed will advance to the title game, the championship game, here in Washington tomorrow night. And not surprisingly, North Carolina advances to the final.